Hello everyone, welcome back to another mini tutorial session here on Ghost Paper. And this one we're going to be creating something really cool as you can see right now on the screen. It's going to be done on Procreate 5 and what we're doing is actually creating some typography component that goes onto an image, creating some compositing with compositing tools here. We're creating in a way that this type feels like 3D. It's sitting underneath the highway and that's something really, really cool that you can do with other pictures and other messaging and you can create that effect for yourself. So that's where we are going to be creating here in this video and I wanna take you step by step on how to actually achieve this so that you can recreate on your site. So uh, first things first, we've created a file here that is a screen size file on Procreate 5 and this is going to be my background image. Now I actually wanna create, of course, the, typo the typographic component. So we're just gonna go into the actions menu add text and here's our little text we're just gonna say move could have pressed caps lock but sorry about that so I just had to type them individ individually we're going to scale this up quite a bit um, and uh, on the slider here it goes all the way up to a thousand but if you want to keep increasing your font or your type element you can keep doing with the uh, scale tool and you're not going to be rasterizing or uh, you know going uh, in a way that you can't edit this text anymore so you're still able to edit this text so now I'm just gonna head into canvas and actually turn on the drawing guide so that I can see my type component because the box is always a little bit misleading as you can see there's a little bit of space at the bottom but the type uh, is actually um, much uh, shorter than that so I just want to make sure that it's sitting nicely within the guides and that is also centered as much as possible so it's going to be something like this I'm just gonna lower it down just a bit let's just say something like that so now on our element I'm just gonna go back into edit text because I actually want this to be white so something like this, and I'm going to turn off the drawing guides. So now we have the beginnings of our uh, what we are trying to achieve here. So now the second step, I'm just gonna turn off our type component, and I'm going to create a new layer. That new layer is going to be, I'm just gonna choose any color. Let's just go with a red color here, and I'm going to be using um, my Studio Pen, just a very low setting, and I'm just gonna get as close as possible here. Now, what we're actually trying to do here is to create a mask. And there are two ways to actually do this. We can draw with color, or we can just use the selection tool. So I'm just gonna show you both ways, and you can decide which way you actually prefer. So the first one, as I said, we're just gonna draw, so I'm gonna make a line. And as you can see, this line is not a straight line. So photography, there's many things that actually create this effect. One is lensing, so by using a lens, you are always gonna have a little bit of a distortion, like lens distortion, and there are also several ways in photography to correct that, to actually uh, undistort a photo back to uh, what we would perceive as a flat image. I can give it a try, I'm just gonna try to draw that curve as if it was a curve, and see if Procreate gives me the controls, so it's not really giving me the controls, so I'm probably gonna try one more time and then I'll probably do the lasso selection mode. So I'm just gonna make sure that I made a curve here. So we got the arc. And now I just gotta zoom in really, really close. Get that done. And this seems about right. And then here, you can see that it's not really perfect, but we'll make it the best that we can. I'm gonna pull this back a bit. Then we're just gonna go straight line because we're going all the way to this side. Straight line here as well. And now let's try to draw a second curve so that we can tweak this one as well. So arc. Now let's try to fix this as much as possible. And let's just make sure this shape is closed so that we can paint. Now let's just drop a color and here's our mask. 
So this one we've actually created by painting. Let's make another layer here and let's create a selection. And this time let's try, let's try with the freehand mode. So here we're just going to draw. And this one we're probably gonna have to edit a couple things. So it's gonna be like something um, like two passes. Okay, so now that we've closed this shape, now we need to go in with our second pass and we're going to add and remove a little bit more so that we get our mask working perfectly. So I'm just gonna show you with a couple movements here, adding and subtracting with this mask. And you can decide at the end of the day if you prefer to go with the painting mode while we just did creating that red solid layer or with the selection mode. So taking a look at the selection here, one thing that we have to do right off the bat is to go into the actions menu and go here at the bottom and selection mask visibility. We have to like really crank this up so that you can see this much better. The way that it was before, it would probably give us a lot of um, hard work to actually be able to see where the uh, definition of everything actually, uh, you know, is sitting on. And if you need to go back into your selection mode, see what I'm trying to do right here, I'm trying to go back in order to, uh, for me to be able to add or subtract from the mask, you just have to press and hold the selection button and that's gonna bring up that bottom menu. So don't worry, don't panic if you actually uh, fall into the same thing as uh, what's hap what just happened here in this video. So now we can just, for example, add an another selection right here in this part and you don't need to close it, but you're gonna click remove. And now, as you can see, we've just fixed that little edge here and you have to do for all of these other areas that we see right here, again, remove, so in a nutshell, this mode is definitely more accurate, but it's definitely the one that's going to take more time for you to get to where you want. So now, as you can see, we have what we need. So now I'm just gonna click on a new layer and click fill layer. And now we have both options. One we've actually painted, the other one we did with a selection tool. So now we need to apply our mask into our text layer. So I'm just gonna click on the layer, hit select, hit invert, because we want to mask this out. And I'm gonna click on our text layer and mask. So now, as you can see, we have masked the text so that the highway is actually now sitting on top. So that is the uh, first thing that we can do. And now we can keep now making this a little bit more convincing. So you can actually using a shape uh, or uh, a brush like the studio brush and I'm gonna choose pure white and I'm just gonna be working on the layer mask here. I'm just gonna get closer and um, I will be kind of painting here just a little bit more so that this feels a little bit better. All right, so now that we've fixed those edges, uh, the first thing that we also need to know is that in photography especially, nothing is really that sharp as the brush that we're using just now, which is the studio brush with uh, maybe one pixel dimension. So what we actually need to do is to click on our layer mask here, and we're gonna go into the adjustments and we're gonna put a little bit of ga Gaussian blur onto the mask and Actually, I'm going to cancel this and zoom in a little bit more and repeat that op operation so you can really see what's happening here. So see that if I blur, um, as I'm blurring the ladder here, you see that the mask is feathering, it's creating a feather effect. And now if I apply even that little bit amount of blur, it starts to make everything a little bit more convincing because once again, in photography, it's really hard to find these really, really sharp objects, especially if things we wanna give that 3D volume to it, to it. We actually need to work with Gaussian Blur a little bit as well. So moving on, 
this is what we need to do. Now we're actually going to take our element and now you're going to start to understand why we actually created our mask as a separate layer is because we're going to need that mask again and again. So I'm just going to make a copy of our mask. I'm actually going to paint it black like this. And now I'm going to set it as a clipping mask. So now we have a black layer set up as a clipping mask only to the move letters. So now with that layer selected, the clipping mask layer, we're going to go into the adjustments once again, Gaussian blur, and now we're going to put a good amount of blur. And all of a sudden, do you see what's happening here? We've actually created a drop shadow or a shadow element from the highway onto the letters. And that happened with uh, us creating just one layer, as simple as that. So we're just going to hit apply and we can play with the opacity. So let's just say that this first layer here is about 70% opacity. And we're going to create one more. Um, we're going to duplicate this and once again set it as clipping mask. I'll probably paint it black once again, it's saying it's a hidden layer. So I got to make it visible. And now we're going to hit Gaussian blur once again. And now if you're asking me, why are we applying two types of blur? That is also because at least in order to fake, um, to do more convincing shadows, it's good to actually use two layers of shadows. One's going to be a more open shadow. So meaning more Gaussian blur, less opacity. And the second one's going to be a little bit less Gaussian blur and a little bit more opaque, like a little bit, uh, a bit darker. So by using two layers of shadows, one a little bit more soft and the other one harsher and darker, you start to give that impression. And that's really, really hard to achieve with just one layer of shadows. So I hope that makes sense. And as you recreate this tutorial on your side, you'll start to understand by visually seeing what I'm trying to do over here. So I think in this one, I'm going to set about 15%, 16% on the blur level. And once again, I might just go into the opacity and just maybe set that up to 80, 80% uh, opacity. And the final thing that I want to do is to balance the Y levels of this image. So how do we actually achieve that? Because right now our type component is really white, is 255 white on all channels of red, blue and green. So in order to get that going, you really just want to use the eyedropper and you want to select anything that is the brightest point of this picture or anything that is sitting at the white levels. For example, I just captured a little bit of that foam on that wave. So now that we have this color, I'm just going to drop this into our letters and you will see that they're just leaving being like completely, completely white into this little bit more of a grayish tone. Now here's a more advanced example from what we've been watching throughout this video. And I want to show you the breakdown of this uh, example right here. So the first thing that I've done is I've scaled up the move type component so that the straight sections of the letter O are going through just nicely through the highway part. And that is because the first thing to do here is to go into the layer mask and I've brought up, I've brought this piece back up. So now the letter O has this really cool three dimensional effect. I've kept the letter M underneath the highway, but brought the letter V back up from the highway. So in, um, in conclusion, I've just basically created this really nice kind of a uh, dimensional, um, effect happening with the, uh, with the word move. Then onto the secondary uh, layers, onto the shadow layers, I had to now erase the shadows that were affecting this section of the letter O, kept the letter M, erased from letter V, and kept for the letter E. And I've done that to both of my shadow layers. Finally, for the car section here, I had to first make the car apparent. So I've deleted or obscured again on our layer mask. I've obscured this section so that the car can be on top of the letter O. And finally, I've added this little layer right here, which basically I've clicked on move, clicked select. Then I made a copy on our background itself. And I've added that background on top of our letter uh, or for our word move so that just I could get this shadow 
that we see, I'm just gonna turn off, I just got the shadow part from this section right here on top of the letters. So by doing that, I've actually set this to multiply in about 45% opacity. I'll just put all the way back up to 100%. So I just did something around 45 to 55 opacity. And that is so that uh, to create this more convincing effect that the car is driving on top of the letter O. So that about does it for this more advanced example, guys. And, and if you did enjoy this video, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon so you don't miss any tips and tricks, speed paint videos, reviews, and any content that we create here on this channel. And of course, that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about masks and the different types of masks that you can create here on Procreate 5, Make sure to watch the video that is right here on the right side of this video and that talks a little bit more about the different kinds of masks, layer masks, and everything that you can use in Procreate to reveal or obscure elements. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao.